How to talk retirement with your spouse. I haven't read this article. My man sent this to me from the uh, Wall Street Journal. Couples can avoid friction during volatile markets with conversations in advance. This is Ann Turgeson. Dateline May 21st, 2021. Rain and sleep. When markets turn volatile, it's hard enough for one person to make decisions. Add another person to the mix and tempers can flare. Just ask my parents. When my mother was comfortable holding a high percentage of long-term savings in stocks, my dad wasn't. So when stocks plummeted in 2008, when they were in their early 70s, he wanted to get out of the market and she wanted to buy more. Buy more with what? I mean, are you, this whole thing, buy more when they're down. With what, what, what? I, I, uh, always cracks me up. Like, are you not fully invested then? I mean, they're in their 70s, probably not. But still, I hear that all the time. Like, 40, I'm 40 years old. I'm buying when the market dips. What are you buying with? When you retire, you go from having an income from work to spending down your portfolio. Says so Julie Verda, a senior manager at Vanguard. A substantial chunk of older adults have very different investing approaches. Among Vanguard's retail clients, ages 65 and 74, many of whom oversee their own investments, 16% have almost 100% in stocks, while 12% only have no stocks. Uh, an advisor in California says close to a third of his couples have significant tangible difference in risk tolerance. Yeah. This often ties back to their unique experiences with money, says uh, some guy. When couples have different risk tolerances, there's no easy solution for joint financial decisions. Here are some strategies. You talk about it. A good way to understand a person's risk tolerance is to look at behavior during past downturns. The question is, how did you feel last March when the markets were down 30%? They, almost, they might also benefit from having an advisor to talk them out of selling stocks when, uh, selling when stocks decline and move that locks and lock. Okay, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, let's see. While a couple of conversations might not bring about agreement, it can reach each spouse more understanding and patience for the other views. Eh, I'm not so sure. This guy says, ask clients, how bad would you have felt if as a nine-year-old you had gone to the market with 10 from your parents and lost the money on the way? Uh, that seems a little bit uh, new agey there. Uh, consider how much risk you can afford to take. You may want to invest heavily in stocks, but that doesn't mean you have to, says an advisor. Couples who have saved more than they're likely to need in retirement can generally afford to invest a higher percentage of the wealth of stocks than those nearing retirement with a shortfall. Uh, retirees shouldn't bet with what they cannot afford to lose, says some guy. Meet in the middle. David Blanchett, head of retirement at Morningstar, said the recipe for frustration for the more aggressive spouse. In a worst case scenario, he or she may raise a couple's allocation to equities just at the market peaks. Blanchett acknowledges that neither spouse may feel satisfied with the meet in the middle approach, but he says a compromise might be the best way to res resist the temptation to deviate from an agreed upon plan by dialing up or down stock allocation. A conservative spouse might worry less about stocks if the financial plan includes the cash reserves that covers a few years of essential expenses for retirement. No. Focus on goals. Yet another approach is to divide the portfolio into buckets. You know, we talked about that. Some lady uh, says this method pushes couples to be aligned on goals rather than their perception of risk. The closer a couple is to need the money for a goal, such as a vacation, college tuition, the more conservatively it should be invested. Things can get complicated when the couple hasn't saved enough. Yep. Uh, some advisor says a couple she works with wanted to fully fund their child's education and retire early, but they couldn't do both. They decided debt-free education was a must-have, while urban retirement was a nice-to-have. So I'm sure they uh, they sacrificed their own retirement for their stupid kid. I, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Mind your portfolio. This is more or less what my parents did. Because each had a similar size individual retirement account, their combined asset allocation fell in the middle of their preferences. But each had a greater sense of control, even though they exercised it over their own piece of the pie. So they split it up. Yeah, I completely agree. For some couples, it can be hard to divide a portfolio, even when spouses start out with similar balances. All right. Um, I, we got, I'll give you my thoughts here in just a second. Let's see what the, some of these conversations are. Uh, the reality of life is that all of us, especially our kids, should be introduced to basic economics and per finance and thrift. Okay. I got interested in growing up as my parents had stock. I inherited some stock and got a dividend reinvesting, which saw my holding nearly double over time. That's it. Well, I'll respond to it. Yeah. Curious what the commenters here think concerning which is better, 
uh, male or female or savers in a marriage. Uh, my wife thinks that money is dirty and does not want to learn. She's lucky I'm a good planner and saver and won't collect Social Security 70. Uh, for a couple of roughly similar size, okay. All right. Uh, so what they're missing here. I, I think the first thing I do is say, what are we I, what are we trying to accomplish here? I mean, my goodness. Um, the guy I talked today, you know, four million bucks. You know what I'm saying? His wife wasn't on the phone, wasn't on there. Uh, but what are we trying to get done? Are we do we are we trying to grow this? If so, why? If we're not trying to grow it, as I always say, once you've won the game, stop playing, man. In this case, it's kind of like, you know, you got four million bucks, you're not running out of money. What are we trying to solve? And you know, they're just simple people, just like most people, you know what I'm saying? And uh so we gotta figure that out. Part two, a lot of women are very conservative, very on the conservative. Not all. There's some the other way around, but most of the people I talk to, the women are very conservative. I know this. And so by default, I start with the assumption, let's, let's see if we can't make this a little bit more conservative with more cash, more safe fixed income so we don't wake up one day 35% down and the husband's got to justify why he didn't see the freaking train wreck. That happens all the time. And I say, look, man. This is what I tell people all the time. Should I be 70-30 or 50-50? I'm like, at the end of the day, if you're 50-50, you're going to have less downside risk. How much are you going to sacrifice on the upside? Not much. And the facts are, what, are, what is the upside for? And that's what I try to focus on with clients. Say, what is the upside we're trying to get here? Because we've already retired. We've probably made it with Social Security and or pension or just the, 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 uh, the assets you have. Is the upside still critical? Well, I mean, is the game still deep? Do you need to be play? If not, why just be conservative? If the point is about retirement is to go out there and have fun without worrying about getting killed at 30%, then I always bring up Japan. I say, what if this is you? And I said, how would your wife feel? Woke up one day a la Japan and you were down to your last dollar. Is it worth it? It might be that we need to take that risk. I get it. A lot of people need to take that risk. She usually aren't hiring me to begin with. <clears throat> but I'm like sitting there thinking, so what are we trying to accomplish here, man? And so you see where I'm going with this. Like I'm just kind of steering to uh, making the woman feel, A, heard, <clears throat> and B, um, trying to steer the husband away from getting growth at all costs because say, do we even need it? If we don't need it, why take the risk? Think how much better in terms of just marital bliss will be if instead of the market getting killed 37% in 2008, 33% in March of 2020, you're like, I'm glad we followed that Wellesley fund. You see what I'm saying? I'm just, oh, because then you're sitting there thinking, all right, so now the market's up 50%. We're only up 30%. No one, no one, that's that's just not a big, you're not, you're not going to be sitting there like, oh, man, we could have been up 50%. You're like, your wife will be like, yeah, but we still did the vacation. We still have grandkids. We still did what we want to do. What would the 50% have done more for us? Yeah, that's what I would suggest. If you won the game, stop playing. And if you won the game by accumulating during your work and career, now it's time to really focus on the decumulation and protect the downside. That should be the priority. Protect the downside first and foremost. And then you can start saying, okay, let's squirrel out a little bit here so you can use that as your, you know, to really take some real gambles. But in the meantime, let's just make sure we don't wake up holding a wet bag. Yeah, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Thanks, Natalie.